But then I remember doing like, started doing the Sudden Impact mixtapes, right? So what I would do was, Sudden Impact was my way of making a, a 60 Minutes of Funk by mm -hmm. Funkmaster Flex or Tony Touch, uh, more so Tony Touch 50 MCs. I took the idea of Tony Touch 50 MCs and modernized it with real good equipment. I didn't use, I wasn't, I wasn't okay with the handheld mic and, and just getting cool G rap, no disrespect, or whoever to fucking come over and spit on the mixtape. I looked at it bigger than that. I was like, yo, we could make, we could record this shit, like, and make it sound, we could do the same thing, mm -hmm. but record it properly and, and fuck everybody up because I'm thinking quality gonna matter. And that's what I did, right? But I would have people come over to the house and rap on somebody else's beat right? Like a, whatever instrumental I had at the time, straight mixtape shit. But I would have them make a whole new song over somebody else's beat. Like the shit that, that people think is commonplace. Now they all do that. But I was doing that shit 20 something years ago. Like the same way a Jamaican would go on there and make a dub version of somebody's shit. Like and make a dub, dub plate version. I was doing that dub plate, so to speak, with, with hip hop records. And it was new. It was fresh and exciting to people. So people were starting to bite and pay attention to what I was saying. But what I did was, I didn't make beats. I had no urge to make beats. I don't like it, man. My brain can't fucking do that. I like to remix. I like to take something that exists and make a new song out of it. Take the acapella and build around it. I don't like to make the beat and then have an artist, yo, come over, you like the beat? Because there's too much of an argument that happens. Like, yo, no, this shit ain't fire. Or, and you're like... You, put your heart and soul into the motherfucker and then they tell you it's corny when it's not. But to somebody else, it's good, mm -hmm. right? Because I already know I'm killing it with Remix. Oh, go ahead. So you like building around the acapellas. Yeah, it's easier. That's what I like. I okay. like to take a, I, something that's there and come around. It's the way my brain reverses. Mm -hmm. like, like I got reverse engineering. I like to take things apart and put them back together, right? I don't want to build the shit. Mm -hmm. I can't process how to build gotcha. it. But what I would do on the Sudden Impact mixtapes was is I would... There was a couple producers that I became really good friends with that was making, starting to make moves in the business. Some of them already really, really did. But it was like, like uh, one was uh, Bink. You know who Bink is? Producer, yeah. Yeah, Bink. Bink Virginia, from Virginia. But he was living in Teaneck too or Englewood or something like that. Mm -hmm. He was doing all the Mr. Cheeks and Lost Boys records and all that other kind of shit, right? And ironically, he started producing the same, in the same crew, same albums that like Just and Kanye were doing. They were doing them like that, like like which happened to be later on being like starting to be like Jay-Z records and Mill records, Beanie Siegel records, that Rockefeller shit when it was just coming up. They were all making those beats, right? And then it was like uh like um other people like Rodney Jerkins, who I know from my days at WLFR in in, in, in Stockton University, right? Like these people, I skipped Rodney, but anyway, but like it's uh they're all part of the same story to me. So like every time I meet somebody along the way, I'll put I'll put you in my heart, right? So I think that I'm gonna give and get get back, right? I don't know if that's that's wrong to do that way, but I want to get I want I'm like yo I'm gonna try to help you. I'm in a position. Let me help you. Even though Rodney was doing his thing, it was like when he did like Gina Thompson and all the other kind of shit. He wasn't Disney Rodney yet. He was just starting to be Destiny Child Rodney, right? Making those kind of records. Beyonce and see it. so it's all connected. It's fucking nuts, bro. I would take the mixtape and I would use like Just Blaze instrumentals, like whatever record he made, no matter what it was. I didn't give a fuck if it was a good song or a bad song. He didn't really make bad songs, but I don't care if the artist was popular or not. I would always use a Just Blaze beat, a Bink beat. You know what I mean? If maybe a Rodney beat, if it made sense, but more so it was Bink and Just and people that that I that I was cool with. I would make sure I used their beats and those two guys in particular. Right, because I'm like, yo, these motherfuckers is gonna pop, and I want the best for them. Mm -hmm. And also, I started getting more and more artists to come over to the house that were of better caliber. Some got budgets now, right? And I'm saying like, yo, they're like, yo, where that beat come from? I'm like, yo, that's my boy Just, or that's Bink. Like these guys don't even know that I was doing that shit from behind the scenes. Like telling motherfuckers who wound up eventually getting beats from them. Mm -hmm. Whether it was a direct result of me, I can't tell you. But I definitely brought that shit up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, they got it. There's a couple of them that are out there, right? Just in particular, mm -hmm. right? I'm not responsible for nobody's talent. Not saying that. I'm just saying that 
I had people in front of me, and I said, these are my dudes. Right. Fuck with them. Right. If you never heard of them before. And they did it. Nobody knew who the fuck they were. They're just beat makers. Because at that point, it was like this ego shit. Nobody gave a fuck. Bro, I was just hell-bent on being a Hot 97. I had a goal to be on Hot 97 by 1997. That was my goal. This is now 90 fucking 99, bro. I'm pissed. Right? I'm like, my records made it on the radio, but these fucking guys don't even know that I made them. So I'm pissed. I'm like, God damn it. Like, don't nobody fucking know it's me, man. The kid who's stalking you, that you're giving no time of day, you're playing his records, Funkmaster Flex, and you don't even fucking know it's him. Fucking nutbag. Right? Whatever. But whatever, that's cool though. That's okay. You get in how you get in, right? <laughs> you know, and and I and I was making remixes and all that other shit. Red Alert, enough. All the motherfuckers playing my records on the radio, bro. Like they knew what I was doing. They knew what was up, and and then they, they all knew that I was a, like I was something else. I was different. And 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 the one thing that was the thing about me is that I never had no help. Like I learned from people along the way, but inherently I'm responsible for everything that I did. Can somebody put me in position like a scissor hands to go in a tunnel? Yeah. But I would have never gotten the scissor hands had I not done step A and B and C. You know what I mean? Or whatever the fuck. If I never went that path, had I never went up to Justin inside the, the record pool and being like, yo, hey, what's your name? He wasn't coming to me. Right, bro? Blame me for Kanye West and Kim Kardashian beef. Because the timeline is like that. Think about it. If I never met Justin, Justin knew it and never went to school. Justin would never did this. This would never happened. The whole world would be different. <laughs> it's the butterfly effect, homeboy. Everything our meeting right now is changing something somewhere else. So you could you could you look at me the same way when I say that. Blame me. Because that 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 blame me and Justin. Because we met, the timeline went that way. Because he would have never met that motherfucker had we never met. Because the timeline would have been different. Wouldn't have happened. He might, he, he was already DJing at the roller skating. Roller yeah, but he would have never done production. We got the equipment together. We got all, uh, that, like, all that kind of shit, like going back and forth, like like going tit for tat is what fucking I did see. it for him. I see. That's when he became a, a Yeah, producer. because you can't, bro, he was the star. You can't have nobody else be equal to you in your own house. Mm -hmm. You don't want that. Ego through the roof, bro. He's nice, humble, but you can't let that happen. Mm -hmm. So he had to bust my ass, bro, and boy, did he. But you know what I'm saying? Like, he, <laughs> yo, he, he murdered me, bro. But hey- all right. I love you, bro, but fuck.